to ba ti ko le de nkan to ba ti pare ma wo nu be ti gbo ba wa be ma ge gbo e ko ma rin ka kiri tori pe mo n bele won a ri kan mo be won a pe awon olopa o ni ri soro o n bo my name is niyo jemakinde i'm the general manager miliki 101.3 fm the journey so far has been very interesting um very difficult particularly in a terrain like Nigeria where businesses are sorry cases when we were going to start we regularly would have the normal issues you know but the bigger one was the issue of power we had issues with um, nepa disco whatever you call them generator running with diesel um, nepa not giving you supply and then you have to invest in solar inverter that's money consuming serious money consuming for us at the beginning at the beginning we had to make up our mind about what we wanted to do differently from what other radio stations were doing because really i mean there would be no reason to set up a radio station if you're not doing anything different which was what we needed to you know um decide which we did but it was really hard really hard at the beginning the good thing is that well god was there for us people will say oh, god god but that's the truth because by the end of 5 months at least we could make begin to make enough money to pay salaries yeah we couldn't make money to buy diesel to do overhead and all but at least we could make enough money from about 5 months that will pay salaries every month and for god sake if you can take off salaries it means that you have reduced the burden of whatever it was so it was hard but god was there for us so we had that that opportunity from then till now we started in 2022 september we will be 2 years old 2024 september it's been um a rocky rocky journey rocky journey because something will just happen you know the way it is with electronics maybe one day your transmitter just coughs and then you begin to run around but good for us we had a backup So from the from the outset from the beginning of the journey we knew that something could go wrong which is why even our studios are linked and we did that because we know that there could be times when the live studio might have issues and then we can cross over to the the recording studio which also doubles as a live studio you know that helped us a lot because when our live studio had issues the console had issues we crossed over to the recording studio and we're live on air you know um why we fixed the issues in the live studio so by and large we have been able to struggle through it don't forget the nigerian factor all of the issues you know but to god be the glory we are where we are today uh, i mean we're still we're still struggling it you know who knows apart from the issue of power it was the issue of being able to pay the real professionals who can help you to start that kind of thing because when you want to employ a professional who has paid his or her dues in the radio broadcasting industry you you must be thinking of paying something in maybe six zeros you know five zeros six zeros and we knew we couldn't afford that so that was a challenge that's so what do we do okay so we have a head who is a professional so what can you do to ensure that if we bring in some green horns we can we can train them in a short time and they will be able to carry the job on and that's what we did you know most of the people we employed at the beginning a few of them had passed through radio but were not particularly presenters who had daily shows and stuff and what we are doing here we need people who can do daily shows because we created belts 
like um, English stations would. By the way, we're an indigenous radio station, all right, that decided to um, recreate what Yoruba broadcasting should be uh, as an indigenous station. We didn't want to be like any other Yoruba station who will make people feel like, okay, so they are Yoruba illiterates. So we decided to do it the professional way. So we created belts where daily shows can run. That was difficult for people who were coming from a background where maybe they were just contributors on the show. Yeah, somebody would just do a segment. Say, welcome to the, the fashion segment. And they would do that for three, four minutes. Or welcome to the entertainment segment, do that for three, four minutes. Now that person has to come and start to do a one hour show every day. You know, that's going to be a real challenge. So it was a challenge, you know, getting the right people to do the job. The other thing that would have been a challenge would have been salaries, but like I said to you, you know, we, we, were, we were blessed. Let me not say we were, we were lucky. We were blessed because after five months, we could make enough money to pay salaries. So, so we have not owed salaries at all in close to two years. We don't owe salaries at all. But let me say that taking off <laughs> so many challenges with, okay, so this person comes to fix this equipment for you, and then the equipment begins to uh, develop issues just in a short time. And you're beginning to think about, okay, so how do we get this done? Okay, so how do we ensure that we can pull through this? But we did all that because a number of times we, we were off here at the beginning. You know, which was understandable. That was quite a challenge. Many times you give this kind of job for installation of equipment to people and then they just come and fumble in some areas. That was also a challenge at the beginning, which, you know, tells to the fact that when we set up this kind of thing, we must be sure of the people who we give the job of installations to people who have done it and, you know, have done it creditably well. So that was. Um, some challenge at the beginning. Beyond that, I, I, I think I think that we are we don't offer. So, me and Jamakide seated here has been part of the setup of three radio stations before this one. So, as part of the setup of Radio Continental, that is now Max FM and TVC. Um, and then I left and went to set up Rock City FM in Abeokuta 101.9 before I went to Asaba in Delta State to help to, you know, kick off. Trend 100.9 FM. So all of those stations are English at the time. But when this Miliki FM was going to start, I told my chairman, I said, I want us to do it in the Yoruba language. He was, he was shocked, uh, you know, a little baffled, worried about that. But I told him that I am saying this for a few reasons. Number one, at that time, when we were setting out, I think we had about 63 radio stations in Lagos, both the ones resident in Lagos and the ones that filter into Lagos, about 63 of them. Out of those 63, we had about five or six radio stations that were doing Yoruba broadcasting and all the others were doing English. Okay, maybe, maybe three or four others were doing PG, all the others were doing English. And I said, see, it would be, it would make commercial sense if we are um, competing with five or six radio stations, they are going to compete with you know 52 or 53 radio stations. That's number one. Number two, which comes to the issue of values that you spoke about, the Yoruba language number one was beginning to go into extinction because many of the children born by Yoruba parents were no more speaking Yoruba, and this is not limited to Yoruba language even. Even Igbo, Igbo language, people 
just generally will want their children to speak English. I don't know what the fuss is about. So everybody wants their children to speak English. Eventually, a child comes and says, my name, my name is uh, maybe Adaku and cannot speak one word of Igbo. A child comes and says, my name is Yoluwa Damilola. I cannot speak a word in Yoruba. And then she's feeling cool with it, you know, believing that the, the, the mother tongue is, is, um, is uh, lower, so to speak, to the English language. So we wanted to change that narrative. What we wanted to do was to ensure that we can make the beauty of the indigenous language, the Yoruba language, come to the fore. We want people to return to speaking Yoruba. So even our children's program, they do it in Yoruba. There's a youth program that is taking off. We do it in Yoruba and they're doing it and they're speaking our language. So we wanted to recreate the Yoruba language and Yoruba broadcasting. So that was what we wanted to do, set up to that. And then we wanted to bring back the beauty of the music. Back in the day, we knew a lot of Nigerian artists who were singing in the indigenous languages, uh, Sikra Ide Barista, Kolintia Elaki, Sonia Ade, Ebenezer Obe, all of these people had fantastic songs, danceable tunes, but importantly, with plenty of messages. So we decided to also now bring all that in. So our unique selling point actually is the old school music that we do in Yoruba, just like we have a station doing uh, old school music in English. You know, we, we started doing old school music in, in Yoruba. So we wanted to bring back our music, bring back our language, bring back our values. Values of respect for elders, values of, you know, people not wanting to taint the name of their family, and all of those things. That was what we set out to do for our values. Ma <laughs> In the next six to eight years, we want to be able to ensure that our people have returned to the Yoruba language and then we have rebuilt our lost values through the radio medium where everybody understands that you cannot be like the white man. The white man cannot speak Yoruba, cannot speak Igbo, cannot speak Hausa. But we speak their language and we speak ours. We should be proud of what we are. So we want to make our people proud in the next six to eight years. We want to make them enjoy because we do a lot of entertainment here. We want to make them enjoy. Right now, you know the country is really tough. People are hungry and everything. So what we do on this station many times is to ensure that we do things that will calm the nerves of the people. And we want to be able to continue to do that, keep our people alive. At least, not less than four people have called to say our station stopped them from committing suicide when they wanted to kill themselves, you know, for certain programs and certain things that we did. So in the next six to eight years, we want to be a, the station to reckon with. We want to be a station that will not just be known in Nigeria, but that will be known all over the world. So people who listen on the different platforms around the world will say this station is representing. That's it, representing. Representing what? Representing its culture. Representing the culture of their people and, you know, making it real. I, I remember that the Indians way back were not even subtitling their movies and we took their movies in Nigeria, we watched the movies without subtitles and we understood them. That's where we're going. We want to be sure that even people who are not Yorubas, we want to be part of it. We already have them in Cuba, we have them in Brazil, who want to do what Yorubas do, they want to do what Nigerians do. And we want to have more of those people.